Do you ever feel like manifestation is just another thing on your to-do list that you don't have time for? Like your spiritual practice is something that you have to do? Honestly, you're not alone because I felt that way too. Something that's really changed my relationship with manifestation is blending it into my lifestyle so that no matter what I'm doing, I'm also manifesting. I call this manifestation as a lifestyle and it single-handedly made the entire manifestation journey more enjoyable for me and I've seen my desires show up with a lot more ease. Manifesting as a lifestyle has made manifestation go from feeling like a task to something I just naturally do because it's who I am. If you'd like to learn more about this, I've created a step-by-step guide for you. I'll link it in my show notes so you can check it out. You're listening to the Affirmation Addict Podcast with Pyle Corley. This podcast will teach you about the power of affirmations while making manifestation easy and accessible for you in order to enhance your spiritual consciousness. Thank you so much for being here. And now it's time to get started. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Affirmation Addict Podcast. My name is Pyle, and today we're doing an episode on how to have contagiously good energy. And you might be wondering why the heck am I talking about this, but I recently went to a wedding, and I kid you not, so many different people asked me and said to me, hey, you have really good energy. And honestly, I was beyond flattered um, because I feel like that's the most genuine compliment I could receive. It's not about how you look. It's not about anything. It's not about your career or your accomplishments. It's just about the energy you are radiating. And it made me feel like I was doing something right on my spiritual journey because I feel great, but it was very cool and honestly very validating to know that other people could feel that energy as well. And it's been something I've been told a lot recently. So I figured, let me do a podcast on this to share with you what I've been shifting in my social settings, in how I show up in the world um, that I believe contributes to this contagiously good magnetic energy. Now, the reason for this before we dive in is I don't want you to listen to this episode with the intention that people like you more. I don't want this to be something that you're doing to make yourself feel more worthy. It really has to come from within. And the fact that this energy is contagious and can be felt by other people, I think is truly a byproduct of it. So don't make sure your intentions are pure. Make sure that you're not doing this from the side of your ego, which is so easy to do. Um, So that's where I wanted to start with. So I have a list of, I think, eight different ways. And I'll just go through one by one. And then at the end of the week, so on Friday, I'm going to be sharing some affirmations in the Affirmant Mini, Affirmant Express. I think it's Affirmant Express, my bad. In the Affirmant Express episodes, I'm going to be sharing some goddess energy affirmations because I really, really do feel like this is very goddess energy like I feel like I'm really showing up in my truth in my divine feminine and my divine masculine in a very balanced way so I called it goddess energy affirmations so those are the affirmations I'm referring to if you feel like you want to say affirmations for this kind of topic in your life okay so the first one is showing up with love you guys know I've been on a love energy kick recently if you've been listening to some of my latest episodes and I think The energy of love is one of those energies that is so misunderstood, and that's probably why I'm so drawn to it. I think when we think of the energy of love, we're thinking about our hearts, our soulmates, romance, but I also think love is compassion, kindness, generosity, and humility, and I love the energy of love. So showing up to functions, showing up for other people, showing up for yourself through the energy of love, showing up with love, not having something that you need to receive from someone, not always having like you having to prove yourself, just showing up with love. How can you have a sense of love in your heart as you show up to different events, as you are in different social settings, and even as you're showing up for work? How can you be more love forward and love focused rather than lack or fear or distrust? And some of the ways, actually all of these, I think all the different ways I talk about contribute to your state of love. And so if you're looking for the how to keep listening, because I'm going to share with you some more tangible tips. I know that was kind of vague. The next one is dropping your assumptions and expectations. This is huge. When you go somewhere, when you are in a new setting and you have all these assumptions that you're making about people, right? People watching is such a fun hobby. 
But in a way, we're just sitting and judging people. Um, and judging is fine, right? Judging is our natural response. We do judge, but making assumptions is where judgment becomes unhealthy. Judgment is in a way observing and we can't help ourselves but to observe. But when you're making an assumption and pairing it through your own insecurity or your own fear or your own projections, that's when it becomes an assumption. So an example is like, say you're going to a wedding and it's really elaborate and you might be thinking to yourself, wow, these people have a lot of money. I wonder what they do. And that kind of goes through the assumption spiral. It's not the most expansive or compassionate energy to be in. So just watch your thoughts, watch the direction. And even if it's lighthearted, even if it's not with bad intentions, it's not contributing to that contagious energy because you can feel the restriction, the judgment. And even if you're not judging a specific person, you can feel somebody who is just constantly judging and observing. And that doesn't always feel good. That doesn't make you feel safe in their presence. And it doesn't make you feel safe with your own self. One caveat as I move forward is this isn't also to make people like you better. This is honestly to make you like yourself better. And as a byproduct, people will also be more drawn to you. But this really has nothing to do with how other people care about you, how other people like you. It's about how you show up and how you react to how other people are treating you, regardless of if they like you or not. So just some caveats, because I know this can seem like it has to do with receiving validation and making sure people are complimenting you. And that's absolutely not the point. Similarly to dropping assumptions is dropping expectations. This goes for all sorts of relationships and interactions is not expecting people to do things for you. Nobody owes you anything. And I believe I recorded a whole episode on this, but no one owes you anything. And if you don't have expectations, you can't be disappointed. And if you can't be disappointed, your energy cannot be drained or sucked. So it's a really cool way to start to raise your vibration and increase your energy. The next one is don't be afraid to be yourself. I know this is so simple, but seriously, go against the grain. You don't have to fit in. You don't have to have people understand you and just stay true to who you are. One huge thing for me, and I've shared this before, is I don't drink anymore. I also don't do any sorts of drugs. Even plant medicine yet has not been on my journey. And in social settings, especially, maybe I would do plant medicine, but it would not be for fun with my friends. It would be in a very intentional, ceremonious way. However, with people and in social settings, no one else I know never drinks, never does any drugs. And that's not a bad thing. I'm okay with all sorts of substances, like do your thing, no judgment. However, being able to say no and being able to stick to that is very much so something that no one else does. And people are respectful. Some people don't get it, but people are respectful. And that's something that's super true to who I am. Another thing that's very true to who I am is I will never make anybody else feel uncomfortable with how I'm showing up, but I will also show up in how I want to. Like some days I really want to dress up in full glam and other days, aka most days, I am in my loungewear and my cozy comfy. And that doesn't mean that other people can't dress up, go for it. But I'm just not in the mood to dress up all the time anymore, um, especially just because it's not my vibe all the time. And sometimes it is. So being true to who you are, being able to express your opinions, you don't have to agree with people just for the sake of it. If you don't want to agree and you don't want to also go through the disagreement, just don't say anything. It takes so much power, but it's actually so easy. And you'll notice when you stop saying things, even when you stop gossiping, people don't actually notice. It's not as awkward and uncomfortable as it might feel, um, even if that's the trajectory of most conversations. I always get a ton of questions in my DMs from people asking how I can manifest X. The truth is you can really manifest anything as long as it's for the greatest good. And if you're having trouble manifesting something right now, or you feel stuck on your journey, I have a really beautiful resource I've made for you. It's a free quiz. It's called the Manifestation Archetype Quiz. And it's something that I've created so you can find out your manifestation style to give you more clarity on your spiritual journey. After taking the quiz, you're going to receive the best resources for your specific archetype to help you attract your desires based on where you're at and what you want to create. 
So you can find a link to the quiz in the show notes or just head to my website at www.affirmation-addict.com. The next one is stop taking everything so personally. Stop making everything mean something about you. This is a new concept that I want to explore and expand upon way more in the manifestation space than I actually have. But this is something that is so interesting to me because it's the way you show up in the world is actually you just trying to figure out who you are. But if you know who you are and you show up with your true identity, you don't take other people's reactions or interactions or even gestures towards you personally. A lot of people get really fired up when people are rude to them or when waitresses are snappy or someone doesn't speak to them with kindness. A lot of people take really offense. And one thing personally that I used to take very personally is when I would get hit on or catcalled, I would really think, am I being provocative? And I would make it mean something about me and make it mean that I have something to fix. Even though maybe I don't, maybe that's just something that happens to everybody, but I don't have to make it mean something about how I'm showing up in the world. So that's something that is so helpful and not taking things so personally, not taking offense to everything. Like, how does it matter? Really ask yourself, how does it matter? And the reason it might feel so big is because so much of your sense of self is externally impacted. But when your sense of self can be really internally created and grounded and rooted, no one can take that away from you. Even if someone is insulting you or talking behind your back or doesn't invite you to something, it can't affect you at that point. The next one is Smile from your soul. I don't even know what I mean by this fully in terms of expressing it in words, but I feel like you know what I mean. Um, It's something that came to me and it feels like something that I really have started to feel. And it just feels like my soul is smiling. It just feels like I'm happy from the inside out, whether it's for myself or for other people, or just by looking at the pretty sunset or the sky or looking at the shadow work against my walls. So smiling from your soul, just feeling that happiness, that presence, that joy from your soul, um, it's magnetic. It is contagious. If there's one thing you take away from this, I want you to explore what smile from your soul means to you. And maybe it evokes a certain emotion in you because for me, that phrase just evokes so much energy and I know exactly what I mean, but I'm not sure if I'm the only one. So explore and reflect on what does smiling from your soul mean to you and how can you do that in different settings that you're in and just in your day-to-day life. The next one is cut out the small talk. If you ever meet me in person, you know that I will never, ever, ever ask you what you do. I do not care what your job is. I don't care how you identify yourself in your career. I want to know what's something you're working through. I want to know the depths of your soul. And that is totally my Scorpio energy coming out. But I cannot do small talk. I don't know what 99% of my friends do. And if I am talking to them about that and their careers only, it means we probably don't have a very deep relationship um, because maybe they don't want to share the depths of their soul with me and that's okay too. But I love having conversations that are depth filled, reflective, inspiring, empowering, and talking about our dreams for the future and talking about what gets you excited and what hobbies and something new that you learned. So I love cutting out small talk, no weather talk, no job talk, no, oh, the food is so good. Like going deep into the depths. I have met some of my best friends in the most random instances, just because I cut out the small talk and they are some of my most prized and truly valuable relationships that I've created in adult life. I know there's a whole misconception that it's really hard to make friends as an adult, but it's not. I think we just forget that we can show our true selves and we can show the shadow sides of us. We can show our depth and we can show all the different parts that make you you. We are complex, important, and just interesting beings. So don't be afraid to be your interesting self. It's very fun to dive into that. Next one is don't partake in the drama. Don't partake in the gossiping. Don't get involved in he said, he said, she said, don't 
kind of dwell on other people's family drama or relationship drama. Don't complain about your own drama. If you need to vent, you can, but if that's all you're doing, it's actually not venting. Venting is when you are having a conversation with the intention to release not so everybody knows what you're talking about and anyone can relate and everybody knows your drama. Those are two very different things. So really get out of the drama and notice that there's so much other stuff you can talk about. There's so many other things you can do. And drama, I have this group of friends who is all the time drama. And it's amazing how the drama keeps coming up for them. It's just their normal. So you're allowed to be a drama-free person, even if drama is so big for them and so normal to them, it doesn't have to be normal for you if you don't want it to be. If you have fun with the drama and you think life is boring without drama, go for it, all yours. But to me, drama creates chaos, it creates uneasiness, it creates he he said, she said, it creates all of these things that I just don't want and it doesn't make me feel better, it doesn't raise my vibration, it doesn't make me closer to my sole purpose and my higher self, so I choose to not partake in the drama. And people try very hard to include me in drama. They will do things to me, they will say things about me. There's a lot of things that happen, but it's like, Honestly, no big deal. Let me not make a big deal. Let me not take it so personally. Let me not also contribute to the chaos. And it's been such a peaceful shift. And sure, I might not be someone's number one go-to best friend, but that doesn't mean that I'm not a valuable person because once again, I'm so sure of myself. If you're noticing a pattern, your contagious energy and that goddess-like energy It comes from within. It comes from that space of allowing, flowing, being flexible and adaptable, non-judgment, going through with your emotions and allowing yourself to receive love through other relationships. The next one is be the calm in the chaos. This is something that I don't think me four years ago would have ever understood. Who I was four years ago was so different from who I am now. Um, But now I can say I am actually quite a calm person, but I'm still so much fun. So calm doesn't mean I'm like boring, sit in a corner. Calm means like I don't get emotionally riled up, emotionally invested, but I am just there for playfulness and fun. I am there to have a good time. I am there to let my inner child free and I am there for good conversation and learning and connecting. I'm not there to be chaotic and dramatic and cry and argue with people and talk about disagreements, talk about how much the world sucks and how much I hate my job. I want to talk about those exciting things and I'm a source of calm and I'm a force of calm energy that I think a lot of people appreciate because I know that all the chaos around me at a certain event or at certain with certain people actually has nothing to do with me and it's because I'm not taking things personally. I'm not making it about me. I am allowing myself to be calm in a chaotic situation rather than be chaotic in a chaotic situation. You can choose to be the calm and it is a choice. I do have to step away and take a breather once in a while because I'm very emotionally sensitive and energetically sensitive. So I do need to take a break sometimes. Um, If I'm ever hanging out with friends, there's times where I'll just, we're at a bar, we're dancing and I'll just go outside for a second and take a few deep breaths. Just kind of disrupt that emotion, those patterns, because it is a lot of overwhelming energy sometimes, but keeping your calm, you have to find the ways that you're allowed to keep your calm too. And then the last one is forgive your way through conflict. It's so easy in conflict to want your ego to come in, to want everybody to know how you were wronged, to make sure you're not crazy or you didn't do anything wrong. It's so easy to continue the stream of conflict. Forgiving yourself through conflict, forgiving the other person through conflict stops that conflict energy right then and there. It cannot continue with forgiveness there. Conflict and forgiveness cannot coexist. Um, Forgiveness trumps conflict. Forgiveness eradicates conflict. And it has been one of the biggest things where if someone says something rude to me at a party, fine. If someone makes a side comment, okay. If someone, I don't know, bumps into me, like a drunk girl bumps into me, it's fine. Like forgiving your way through conflict 
really contributes to your energy in these social settings. And all of these I shared through the lens of social settings because I think it's the easiest for your energy to be rattled in these social settings for it to kind of take away from that contagious energy. But all of these you can do with in your own home, in your own personal space, through your own spiritual practice. These are all concepts that are kind of, I don't know the word, but like ever applicable. Like they can go into any single area, anything you're manifesting, any self-worth work that you're doing, it applies to it all. It's very interchangeable. So give yourself permission to practice these, not only to have magnetically contagious, attractive energy, but also to just feel that way about yourself with yourself for yourself. There is so much power in that. So I hope you're able to try some of these things out. And then once again, at the end of the week on Friday, I will be sharing a mini affirmant episode about affirmations to kind of help you tap into this energy. So I'll see you on Friday and thank you for being here. I love you. Bye. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If this episode resonated with you, it would mean the world to me if you can rate, interview the podcast and share it on your social media. So I know to keep creating episodes that are inspiring you to manifest. I'm so genuinely grateful for the time we shared today. And I'd love for you to join the community by following at Affirmation Addict on Instagram. To continue diving into spirituality and manifestation, head over to my website, affirmation-addict.com. Until next time, I'm sending you so much love and so much healing energy.